globally, human trafficking is a $150 billion a year industry. There are between 60,000 to 100,000 child victims in the sex trafficking industry in the Philippines. So these are some photos which I took during the closure of an establishment that was found to be selling sex with children. From the point of view of the victim, for some, they feel relief. Some have said that last week, I wasn't even sure if anyone would hear my prayers, but I was praying to be rescued. The moment of rescue are incredibly hopeful and show the best qualities that we can have as human beings. My friends and family call me Lo, and I'm an Atlantic Fellow for Health Equity in Southeast Asia. Sex trafficking became a lot more of a problem for the Philippines around the time that the U.S. had its military bases in specific cities. They created this incredible demand. So you do have like this thriving sex trade throughout history. It is the way it is, precisely because certain individuals with power are drawing incredible benefit from it remaining that way. Iburgos was known as a hot spot for, not just for prostitution, but for trafficking in young children in particular. You were uh, on, on it as well? Yes. Gideon Kauton is a colleague, co-worker, but he's also in the same fellows program as I am. We did the raid on this one, November right. 2015. He's my counterpart doing law enforcement development while I work on the prosecution side. The fellows really are a community that's creating an impact. Was it like this before, like completely open? No, no, it was, no, it was, it was closed, no yeah, windows. No windows. You can still, still see, see the, old name. the old name, right? Avery. When that successful operation happened here, it really sent shockwaves to this location. That one is a sharper transformation. Mm. There's just this general acknowledgement that law enforcement has not let up. And so there's a greater fear factor around child trafficking. I was feeling like we're winning all these cases, but you know, what happens to the survivor when the case is won? I work with International Justice Mission, IJM. Paper Project has its own mission to provide decent work to survivors of exploitation. It creates handmade cards from handmade paper, supplying them to the American market. To do so in a way that makes sure they make more than the minimum wage, and that the business is running in a way that is ecologically sustainable. Hello. You have to be willing to be a lot more than just a place of work. Ako si Monica Renomeron. Ang trabaho ko sa Paper Project ay ako ay isang site coordinator. Nung 8 years old kasi ako, yun, I was raped po. Through IJM, mas lumakas yung loob ko, naharapin yung, yung gumawa sa akin ng hindi maganda. So at least ngayon, wala na. At least ngayon, wala nang madadamay, wala nang magiging biktima. At matututunan niya na yung leksyon niya sa kulungan. Tapos, um, yun nga, hindi na ako biktim. Na sabi ko, hindi lang pala ako hanggang dito. Survivors like Monique are able to redefine and change the narrative to take into their hands the direction of the story. We would like to call one of the representatives of our All-Star, Monique. 
Monique came to the paper project as one of the first referrals from IJM. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Seeing her rise up within the community of the paper project and bring others with her, that's very life-giving for me. And to know that what we do uh, supports her in that and others like her is incredibly fulfilling. It is giving tools to other you know, fellow human beings to flourish and thrive as the community of survivors. Bilang ano, bilang babaeng leader nga at o survivor, kasi nga babae din yung anak ng dalawa. Gusto ko talagang ma-share yung awareness. Totoo lang po ngayon pa lang, ini-educate ko na siya lang patungkol sa mga bagay na ano yung good touch or bad touch. Pinapaliwanag ko na yun sa kanila. Lagi ko rin sinasabi sa kanila. Lagi ko talagang sinasabi sa kanila, i-enjoy nila yung buhay nila, i-enjoy nila yung pang-araw-araw nila. Gusto ko masaya sila. Your friend, Tutsiyo. The work I do is important to me because it aligns with my core values. For me, it's faith, it's making a difference, and it's family. If I'm able to you know, live my life in a way that's true to those core values, then I know it's worth the time, it's worth the effort, it's worth all the risk. <laughs>